This sprinkler head has a temperature rating of 155 degrees. Have you ever wondered how water gets to a sprinkler head? Well today you're going to find out. Okay, fire sprinkler systems are easy. The main goal is to get the blue stuff on the red stuff. I don't know, I heard that someplace it sounds right. Well, in order to do that, we have to get water to the sprinkler head. How we do that is with a automatic sprinkler system, either a wet system or a dry system. There's many different types of wet systems, many different types of dry systems. Today, we're gonna show you how to trip and reset a dry system. Okay, now we're going to be testing the dry system. Very first thing you want to do is get with the alarm company and take the alarms offline. We don't want the fire trucks rolling if they don't have to. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to record our pressures on this dry system. We're going to record the air pressure, which is at 45. We're going to record the water pressure. Wait a minute. Can you see this? Oh, follow me. Can you see this? We got the water pressure down here. We got the air pressure up here. We're going to record both of those before trip. Then what we're going to do is we're going to open up the inspector's test, which is at the most remote point of the system on a dry system. Once all that air exhausts, we're going to record the time it takes from the time we open it until the time water hits the most remote point, which is the inspector's test. Over here on this end, we're going to be recording how long it takes to trip. We're going to be recording how long it, or how much air we're going to lose, and we're going to be recording water pressure at trip. Okay, we have a person at the inspector's test going to time it, see how long it takes water to get to the end of the system, and I'm here to record the air in the water. Are you at the inspector's test? Ten four. Go ahead and open up your inspector's test. The valve is fully open. Did you get water to the end of the inspector's test? Okay, we just tripped the valve, but the very next thing we need to do is we need to drain the system so we can get it reset. Well, part of draining the system is also exercising the valve. We also need to exercise the valve. Killing two birds with one stone here. So let's get this thing shut off. shut off. Now let's drain it and drain all the low points. We just tripped the system. Now we need to drain it. Okay, what we're going to do now is reset this valve. This valve right here, you have to take off the faceplate. Set the clapper seat. Then what we're going to do is this has a side plunger. We're going to set the side plunger. We're going to put air on it, and then we're going to bring in the water. 
Let's get that done. Very important on these old valves that you make sure that it's drained. This faceplate can come off and can hurt you. Once you get the faceplate off, you're only halfway there. On this particular valve has a side plunger. Not a lot of valves have that. This is what we call a side plunger right here. You want to check your rubbers out. You want to make sure that there's no cracks, they're in good shape, and they're not going to fail. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to show you the inside of this dry system. Okay, right there we have a clapper seat. Right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it down. On the inside is the wet seat. On the outside is the air seat. And in the middle of the wet seat and the air seat is called an intermediate chamber. What that chamber does is it tells you whether or not you have a leak from your wet seat or a leak from your air seat. Okay, the intermediate chamber comes to this ball drip right here. And that ball drip will tell you if your air seat's leaking or your water seat's leaking. I call it a tattletale. All you have to do is push in on that button right there and there's a ball, a floating ball right there. Push in on that button, make sure that ball's not set and it will tell you if your air seat's leaking or your water seat's leaking. Okay, I know I don't have the lighting right, but what we're gonna do here is there is a catch right back there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our hand, pick up on that catch, and release the seat. We're going to release the seat and drop it down. You, you notice that it didn't drop down all the way. The reason it didn't drop down all the way is because of that first catch right there, that one right there, this catch right here, don't catch, you have a secondary. So you have to make sure that secondary is down. Right there, make sure that's free. Make sure that catch is free. If both of those catches are free, you're in good shape. All you gotta do now is work on your side plunger. Right here is your side plunger. And what we're gonna do is we are going to slide it in this hole right here. And there is a There is a rubber right there, a little O-ring. You want to inspect that O-ring. Make sure that everything is good. No cracks, not stretched out. It's in good shape. We're going to slide our side plunger in like so. Okay, we have our clapper seat set. We have our side plunger in. Now let's get some covers on this thing, get some air on it. Let's do it. Okay guys, this is taking too much time. Okay, and just like that, the side plunger's on. What the side plunger does is it's kind of like a built-in accelerator. It actually has a flapper right here that holds the seat down. Alright, now time to put on the faceplate. Base plate rubber looks pretty good. It's got some wear to it, but as long as it holds air, we're in good shape on the base plate because it's not a moving part. Clappers are down, side plungers reset. Now all we have to do is put air on it, but first we have to drain the low points. After the low points are drained, now it's time to put air on it. Alright, 
we got the air coming in. After the air fills the system up, then we can bring in the water. Okay guys, now it's time to get some water on this thing. Okay, we have to cut on this wall post valve right here. Never leave them jammed open. Always make sure that you back them up. Never want to jam them open. You tighten them when you shut them and make sure that they're loose when you open them. Okay, that dry valve was just one type of dry valve. There's multiple dry valves out there. Right here we have a Tyco DPV1 push button. All you have to do is push this button and it resets. Okay, this is a DPV-1 Tyco, and the way you reset it is you push this button right here. And what it does is it drops that clapper seat. Let's push the button and find out. Just like that. Okay, on this DPV-1 Tyco push button, you can also check it out down below on that table. As you can see, we didn't hire any big production crew. It's just me with a camera. So I hope you learned a little bit about fire sprinkler systems today. And don't forget, uh, we're giving away a Yeti cooler someplace down there. And uh, enjoy your conference. Have a good day. I'm out. Yeah.